This is me, the Undead Viking. I'm going to talk to you. Well, <laughs> I, this yes, okay. This is an RPG book, and I will talk to you about it here in just a little bit. But this is a bit of an odd one. Um, so uh, it is probably it's it's an adventure. It's a giant like dungeon, but don't. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be tough to explain what this is. Um, but uh, this uh, is probably best suited for. Why well, I, I I could see you being able to like. Uh, transpose this uh, this this book and and, and taking it uh, to um, like say a Pathfinder um, you know I, I could see doing that I, I you know strangely it's probably better suited for fifth edition just because fifth edition really shares a lot with old school uh, types of D&D &D, swords and wizardry um, uh, like well, I, I'm trying to think of other ones like castles and crusades um, if you are a uh, playing uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess, things like that. Um, and this is from some of the people that have done some uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess, I feel. However, um, it wasn't uh, published by them, I believe, if I remember correctly by looking at this, um, it was published. I mean, uh, the, the authors um, are, uh, are Zach Sabbath and Patrick Stewart, who are, you know, well known in that old school uh, revival of D&D type of stuff. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit beyond myself. So um, this is called uh, The Maze of the Blue Medusa. Now, I actually was told about this. I didn't know anything about this book. Um, but uh, like Scott Alden uh, told me about it. He had like read about it or something, how like it was kind of like a, almost like an art book, if you will, um, that somebody managed to take and uh, turn into um, a, a, a D and D adventure. So I'm going to show you something here. I don't usually like showing a lot of stuff in my RPGs, um, mostly because um, I just don't want to spoil secrets and things like that. And I found, um, relatively, uh, you know, to my to my great uh, pleasure, um, that more and more role playing games and, and books and things like that are are doing a really good job of being having good secrets, good mysteries within within the 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 confines of the of the of the dungeon or the system or what have you. And part of the the best part about having good secrets is that you get to spring them on players, and players can be surprised. I mean, um, I, I don't like knowing what's going to happen at the end of a movie before I see it. You know, I, I want I want the it to show me the story, right? So that being said, um, there's a lot of crazy stuff about the Maze of Blue Medusa, and I'm just going to um, show you a couple of things. Uh, for, for, for the starters, so they basically, um, this is going to be kind of tough to see, but if you pause this, maybe zoom in or what have you, um, this over here is like a classic D&D map. You can kind of see it's got, you know, like little rooms and colors for different sections of the dungeon and what have you. The dungeon's got over 300 rooms. It's got 304 rooms. And then this over here is an actual painting, a painting that was made that um, basically what they did, they decided that each one of these little things, these little parts of the painting, they turned them into a different room of the dungeon. And so, uh, so it's kind of cool. And then, like the depiction of the stuff in the painting is actually you know represent represented in you know in the the dungeon as well. Um, so it's 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 a bit of an odd thing, right? <laughs> it's not exactly um, uh, this is not like you know going and buying the keep in the borderlands off the off the off the off the off the shelf and having like you know these are the three levels of the dungeon and what have you and I would say definitely um, that this is a dungeon that you you need experienced players and you need a very I would I'm, this is not a good uh, adventure for uh, first time DMs this is a I have probably read through this book twice and you know spot red sections uh three or four more times and i still would hazard my ability to really effectively um show this or play this dungeon and uh do it however um it is a fantastic read i mean fantastic read and i've gotten so many good ideas out of this so 
ostensibly uh, what the maze of the Blue Medusa is. And this is the Blue Medusa. And I, I forget her name. It's a really weird and long name. Um, the uh, She runs this maze, right? And the maze has, um, you know, all of, like... Like it's it's her construct, if you will. It's 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 her uh, domain, and um, there are lots of other and 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 the blue Medusa. I don't want to say too much because she she is a bit of a um, a cryptic figure, if you will. Uh, but um, you know she's not necessarily um, the the enemy of the players, but she's not necessarily a friend either. And 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 the dungeon kind of evolves as the players play. They'll do certain things in the dungeon that will affect it and change it. Um, and there's lots of different power struggles and things going on within the dungeon. And once again, I really don't want to give away too much because all of these different like powers and these things that are within the dungeon. Um, all have their own purposes and their intents and the things they want to do. And when the players go in there, they're going to discover them and they're going to talk to them and they're going to interact with them. And then that the choices they make, you know, who they side with, who they ally with, who they help, it's going to affect everything else. And so, um, and it, 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 you know, no two, I mean, and, and admittedly, you can probably say this about a lot of adventures, but no two groups will ever go through this the same way. I mean, there's just too much craziness going on. So it does give a very good background as to the, the major power players and why they're in there, what their purposes are. And then when they actually talk about them, there's an entire chapter of each of these, like, dramatis persona, if you will. And they actually talk about um, their inclinations and what their what their desires are and things like that. And really, I mean, I, I can't say enough how well written this book is, um, but it is dense. It is a dense, dense book. And it does kind of fly in the face of um, standard, uh, you know, dungeons and role-playing games, if you will. So it's, it's definitely a change of pace type of thing. So bottom line is, is that, um, at some point, uh, the players, uh, get their hands on a painting and the painting is a, uh, is, is magical. And the painting is actually a key that will actually get them into the maze. And, the once they're in they're in and and there's lots of craziness and lots of different encounters and lots of different things going on however there's also lots of rooms with nothing going on and one of the best things about this is that it really promotes random encounters now i'm a big big fan of random encounters uh i think that uh we've, we've kind of gotten to the point with a lot of uh role-playing games where you just like each of these rooms is an encounter and we'll walk to that room we'll have that encounter we'll walk to that room and have that encounter we'll walk to that room and have that encounter and um people see dungeons as little staging areas if you will it's like okay we'll go to here and then we'll kill this thing and then we'll take its treasure and now we're gonna sit and we're gonna get our spells back and now we're up and we're gonna walk to this spot and we're gonna kill that thing and we're gonna take its stuff and and, and so on and so on and there's a lot to be said about having rooms that are open that just have nothing in them. Or, or they have things in them that the players can interact with. You know, whether it's rubble on the ground or a fountain. Perhaps, you know, just some strange murals on the wall or something like that. That they can interact with. But while they interact with that, that's when you kind of roll and you find a random encounter. And that, that, that will wander into the room while they're, while they're, they're there. And I think that's a good thing because it keeps people on their toes. And also, it's it, especially if you have players that are used to, um, like, walk to this room, have that encounter, walk that, you know, like that process. When you have that, they start thinking, well, that, that encounter was important. It was supposed to be in that room for whatever reason. Now, eventually, you'll break them of that habit. But I do think it's, it's good that you do that. And it's a good experience for players to have, um, you know, it, it, it teaches them conservation of, of, of like resources uh, as, as players you know don't use up your potions don't use up your spells that sort of thing how many times have you played a game uh, with like wizards that are just blasting the first thing they see with their highest damage spells and then they're like well I don't have any spells though we got a rest 
and uh, you know this will like tell them okay maybe the, you know maybe throw a magic missile or something you know and just like maybe just play on the outskirts here only bring out the big guns when they're needed that sort of thing so I you know I I, I, I like that it it promotes that 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 wandering monster that random encounter if you will now i mean and i can't go on i mean the the, the artwork because this is basically an art book um yeah I, I, by, by art book what i mean is is that like there are pages of like i'm gonna find one here quick i mean they just have cool like like you know art in the corners and things like that and like and here's like the the thing of a lot of the dramatis persona and each one of the people like it just says it says where they are and then it tells them what do they want what do they not want you know well how can you know how will they interact with the party and it lists everybody you know all the people all the major like i said all the power players that are in there now one of the things i really like also like there's there's really cool like encounter tables and things like that. Um, there's a tables for like when you search a random body, what you might find in the body by rolling a, just rolling a D100, and then you get that. Um, and ultimately what this is is that, yes, it's the maze of the Blue Medusa, and you are kind of working your way to try to get into the middle to run into the Blue Medusa. But once you get to her and you interact with her, um, it's it's... it's it's a it's good mystery. Let me just put it that way. Um, like, what are what's your whole purpose of being there? Why are you there? Who have you run into before running into her? That now you're going to you know like make are you gonna fight her? You know, and and it isn't like she's you know she's not invulnerable. She's not. I mean, yes, she's like this this very ancient uh, power. And but the players you know could fight with her and could very well defeat her. But what does that mean? for the Maze of the Blue Medusa if you were to defeat her in combat. And so there's things like that that are really, really good about it. Now, um, I'll be completely honest. I don't know how, how uh, if this is out of print or not. I suppose I should have looked that up before. But I just I saw this on my bookshelf the other day, and I actually took it down and I read it again. And I just kind of I consumed it. You know, it was one of those things where I was just like, oh, this is just so good. I haven't read it in a while. So I... Um, you know, I, I so I apologize if this is tough to get a hold of. I mean, I'm gonna guess that if you can't get a, a hard copy, um, you can probably get a PDF uh, and and get it. Now, a couple things about it. Um, is it really really cool? Yeah, it's it's super cool. If you can get a hardback copy and you're kind of a collector, should you add it to your collection? Yes, I think you should totally and fully add it to your collection. Um, just for the just for reading it and and just to kind of read how like a, a, a master uh, you know like creators you know like create something like this now is it something you're gonna run Ugh, I don't know I mean I really don't know I I just I mean I I've thought about it I've thought about maybe like trying to figure out a way to have a you know uh, 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 like maybe like a online session of it you know and have the same, you know, three to five people meet every month and, and get together and, and, and play online to play this, because I think it, because it is definitely gridless combat, it's theater of the mind, it's more mood, if you will, than actual, like, fighting and stuff like that. Um, but I just, it's, it's very, like I said, this, this definitely should not be a first, uh, adventure for, for DMs, and it's just, it might be one of those things where, it's it's probably better as a you read it as a DM and then you glean a lot of things from it. You know, like you 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 take really cool ideas, you steal um, cool uh, uh, like like ideas for NPCs and rooms and and puzzles and whatever, and you take those and you use them in other campaigns and use them in other dungeons that you create yourself. I'm not saying I'll never run it. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but. Uh, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, I think you'd have to have the perfect group. I think you'd have to have maybe uh, a captive audience and you'd have to just kind of run it as a one shot type of thing. Uh, it, I don't think it would really stand up well to having a campaign. I could see running this at a convention. Like if you had, if you, if you wanted to run one thing and you wanted to get five people signed up and just play like two days of a convention and just play this, definitely could see that. I could see that. Maybe someday I'll do that. But 
Um, and I don't even know if two days would be enough, honestly. It's a lot of room, a lot of stuff, a lot of things going on. But, uh, it, like I said, if you're a collector, um, track this down. Uh, like I said, if it's in print, get, get the hardback, because it definitely is very well made. Uh, it is an extremely good book, and I think you'll like it a lot. Um, you know, if, if you just want to, you know, if you just want to maybe check it out to, like, steal ideas and stuff like that, just, you know, probably maybe check, you know, snag the PDF if you can track it down and, uh, and get that as well. But, uh, fantastic read. They did a fantastic job with everything. I just... You know, maybe not the best uh, actual dungeon to play, if you will. So, there you go. That is uh, the Maze of the Blue Medusa. If you have any questions about it, or maybe you disagree with me, maybe you think it's the best ever dungeon to run of all time, uh, then I want to know about it. I want you to tell me about it. I want you to tell me how, when you ran it, when, like what happened. I, I would definitely love to hear that story. So... Uh, as always, thank you uh, very, very much uh, for all of your help in watching this and, and listening to my channel and whatever. Um, as, and, yeah, that's that. <laughs> all right, until next time, uh, thanks for watching, and you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.